Coming up next, we'll look at what compound time is and how successful people use it. We'll teach you how to write a cover letter and we'll take your calls. It all starts right now. Coming to you live from Ramsey Studios in Nashville. You are joining a conversation about who you are, what you were created to do, where you want to do it, and how you can get there. I'm Ken, so excited that you have joined us. 844-747-2577. 844-747-2577 is the number. You can also jump in to the chat room uh, by simply putting your question in now or throughout the show. We'll get to your chat questions a little bit later in the program. Now, heads up on that. Uh, yesterday, we had a couple of come in that were so general that I can't give you any specific answer. So uh, we challenged those folks to call in, and they did. So the idea here is, is that if it is very nuanced and needs a lot of details, I can go back and forth with you on the phone right now. You can call. Madison is standing by. And uh, so we're live. Come on, right now. That's why we do it. Uh, but if it is straightforward and I can answer it in the chat room, feel free to do that as well. 844-747-2577. So CNBC put an article out written by Michael Simmons. Really enjoyed it. Why successful people spend 10 hours a week on compound time. So what is compound time? So uh, Simmons has done a ton of research on successful people and habits. And essentially uh, found that top performance... Uh, excuse me, top performers find time to step away from their urgent work, slow down and invest in activities that have a long-term payoff on their knowledge, creativity, and energy. So they may uh, at first achieve less in a day, but they accomplish way more over the long term. And so this is why he calls it compound time. It's like compound interest. The daily investment that yields tremendous success over the long haul. Um, and uh, this is a quote from the article that I want to share. Billionaire entrepreneur and investor and philanthropist Paul Tudor Jones said, intellectual capital will always trump financial capital. So the idea is, is that they're, they're learners. Uh, and so just want to run through this because I, this is the challenge. I want you to consider as you hear this list of actions that very successful people take every day, it's baked into their schedule, so they're not as busy as you are, uh, and busy as I am. I got to tell you, uh, I'm doing pretty good on this, but I could do way better, okay? So I went through and kind of assessed my day-in and day-out schedule based on these activities. Um, so here they are, thinking, journaling, napping, all kinds of benefits to napping. Uh, this is not something that I do or have ever done, Joe, uh, but Churchill was famous for his afternoon nap. A lot of science behind this. You can go do your own research on the benefits to your brain uh, of napping during the day. Uh, walking, a lot of health benefits, not just from the exercise standpoint, but the mental release. Uh, reading, conversation, and experimenting. And uh, I got to tell you, this is, this is really, really important that you take an assessment, an inventory, of how much of your day is spent on any of those intentional activities outside of your job. You say, well, can I have conversations all day long? No, 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 no. I'm talking about getting away from your professional role, the position, the job, the work, and spending it in any of those activities. The point is, I want to challenge you to consider how much you could be doing that has nothing to do with your job that actually makes you better at your job, better at your profession, better long-term. It's a really interesting exercise. I think we should all take the exercise, take the challenge to see what are you doing with compound time? Results that will be compounded over the long haul because of the disciplined daily actions that you take. Think about it. Then do something with it. 844-747-2577 is the number. A little bit later in the program, uh, we are going to talk about writing a cover letter. I've not covered this a lot on the show, uh, but the search engine guru is here 
uh, at the Ken Coleman Show have told me that this is a searched term, and we're talking hundreds of thousands of searches every month. So we wrote an article on this at KenColeman.com. If you want to jump ahead, you can download uh, or print out the article uh, at KenColeman.com under our article section. We're going to cover that a little bit later because there is a way to do it and a way to stand out. And that's what this is all about, standing out so that you can step in and then step up. 844-747-2577 is the number. Here we go. Red Wing, Minnesota. Marina is on the line. Marina, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hi. Hi. Thank you for taking my call. You bet. What's up? Hi. Okay. Well, I am a newly divorced um, mom who has two young children. And so I'm kind of starting my life from scratch. Um, And so I decided to go back to school to, I already have my two-year degree Mm -hmm. in general studies. Mm -hmm. And so I decided to go back and get a degree in tourism and hospitality management Uh because I've been a server for several years and I really fell in love with the hospitality industry, um, more so because I love just taking care of people. And Mm -hmm. so, but now I'm not sure if I want to keep doing this degree, mostly because I'm, you know, working and I'm trying to school and take care of kids. And mm-hmm. I've kind of just like, yeah. what am I doing? Yeah, um, I get and it. Now the, the school is restructuring. So I'm going to have to take now more electives because they've changed the way that they're doing programs. Mm-hmm. And so I feel like I'm yeah. putting in all this work just to go backwards. Yeah, um, I get it. So what is the, what's the goal? Where would you want to be if I could just snap my fingers, fast forward all the schooling, all the stuff you've been thinking about, what's the position that you really want? Is it management in a hospital, uh, excuse me, in a uh, hotel, restaurant? What is it? Well, the, my issue is that I am all over the place in my interests and my passions and what I want to do in my life. Okay. Um, but, well, then let's focus but, on that because you couldn't answer the question, but do your best to answer. No. Let's just take a step. But the bottom line is I want to take care of people and help people. Um, I, I worked for a missions organization before I got married and I always wanted to be um, like working on profits or take care of people. Um, okay, let's stay so right there. Part, let's stay right okay. there. You've always wanted to serve people, take care of people. Yes. All right, so I want to stay there in this thought. Who are the people you most want to serve? Let's just take money out of the equation for a moment. We'll figure out how to get there later. But let's just drive in on this key point. You've always wanted to serve people. You've always wanted to help people. Who are the people you have most wanted to serve? Um, just people that are struggling to just get by in life. They're hungry or they don't have a place to live or mm-hmm. they come to America. I was adopted from Russia, so okay. I know what it's like to struggle and yeah. not know the language. And Okay, good. Um, now we're getting somewhere. Okay. So those are the people that you most want to help. And and the challenges that they have, the challenges you're most passionate about would be what? Think of all the challenges they have, the needs they have. What are the ones that you most go, I don't want to help so much with this part, but this this area, this is where I'm most excited about helping them. You were touching on it, but be more specific. Um, just like their basic life needs, I'm not sure. Yeah, see, but that, there, therein lies the issue. Because that's who you most want to help. What you didn't yeah. say was, I just want to help tourists. You didn't say that. So what we've yeah. got to identify no. is what makes your heart come alive. And and can we say it's immigrants? Is that is that the people group? People that are coming to the U.S. and they're a little bit behind the eight ball because of information or uh, because of their income? Is that our core group is immigrants? Yeah. Okay. I would say so. Okay, great. So what, what your homework assignment is, and I'm not going to force you to come up with it right now, but I can tell you the, the questions you need to ask, okay? And the questions are, uh, what is the area that these immigrants struggle with the most uh, or areas, okay? And then almost you need to rank those out. Right. So you would come up with a list. Well, I know from my experience, Ken, that they struggle with this, this and this. These are the top three to five areas that are a real challenge for somebody that's coming into this country. So you first must get really clear on those problems. Right. 
And as mm -hmm. you're identifying the problems, this is clarify and verify. As you're identifying the top five or three problems, then your heart's going to begin to, as you see them on paper and you begin to think through these challenges, your heart's going to uh, be drawn into one or two of the problems more so than the rest. Does that make sense to you so far? Yes. So that's the verify. And then the, the and, and then you need to think, okay, now that I've identified the problems, the challenges that I'm most fired up about, who's helping solve those problems? Uh, and you want to look at obviously the nonprofit world, which you've always wanted to do. So you've got, you know, you've got a real draw there. But then you've got your local, state, federal government is on some level helping those folks. You could look at government jobs as well. I'm not saying that's where you need to go. I'm saying you begin to identify who's serving them. Right. Then you look at ministry. So you've got your NGO nonprofits, you've got government, and you've got ministry. Okay. Yeah. And I would also kick the tires in the for profit world. What companies are out there that are uh, trying to help? And what are they offering? Yeah. And, and see, I, go ahead. A part of me, like, I want to be like very knowledgeable and very good at what I do and yeah. more coming from a business, like, not, not good. like, barely making ends meet struggling I agree. I agree. job like i want to be like top like you know like on the top of my game like yeah more in like the professional business setting okay and tackling it that way well then that's um, where so then, i don't know well but that's where you're researching because you might find okay. that it's not going to be a direct thing you might not find a bunch of companies that uh, company xyz that help immigrants right but 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 is there an indirect connection you know what I mean? Where you are involved in a company that is serving a people group and helping make their life better. Uh, and that, that includes a lot of those people that are immigrants, but it also just includes everyday people who are struggling. You know, so you got to, again, that's why you've got to identify these problems. I'm telling you, when you answer the question, who are the people I most want to help? What's the problem that they have that I most want to solve? What are the solutions to their problem that I most get excited about? That is your homework assignment. That's mission. Talent's what you do best. You know your hard skills, soft skills. Passion's the work that you love to do. You know you love serving people. And be more specific on that. And then the third thing is, again, what are the results that I get excited about? Your clarity is that close, but you've got to answer the questions within, what is my mission? Who do I want to help? What problem do they have that I want to solve? What are the solutions to their problem that I get excited about? Uh, folks, it's that simple. 844 Seven four seven two five seven seven. Let's go to Richmond, Virginia. Cole is on the line there. Cole, you're on the Ken Coleman show. Good morning, Ken. How you doing? Cole, I'm living the dream. What's up? Well, I got my dream job and it turned out to be a nightmare. Uh oh. For me. <laughs> yeah. So, what happened? Well, I I made a decision whenever I was in high school because I had two loves that I really liked. I liked IT and I loved um, mass communications, like television, media related stuff. Okay. And I really wanted to do it for a church. Right. So I worked all through college and then I worked, you know, doing stuff, you know, like volunteering and everything. And then I finally got to where I wanted to be, you know, I got to a church and it ended up just really not being where I wanted to be because mm -hmm. it's just, I, I realized that, you know, I worked so hard for it, but yet by the time I got there between high school, college, first job, then to that job, it was just, it just really wasn't the same and it wasn't what I remembered. And then it just became this thing of like, where this is just terrible. And in, in, in the sense of the fact that uh, there were just certain things I'd never taken into uh, thought about what it would be like to work for a church and also attend that church. And okay. So, hold on. Like it, so that's key right there. I'm, I'm, I'm interrupting you because we've got to, we've got to dive in here. Was it the work or was it the location? I think it was the shared, um, because I had to move across the country for this job. And, um, it was the fact that I had no community where I moved and my community was my workplace okay. and my workplace was my community. All right. But do you see the difference there? So that you were doing, it seems to me like maybe you were doing the right thing in the wrong place. You have all these external factors that are making you go, oh, I just don't even want to go in anymore. But but what I want to find out is, is it also that you didn't enjoy the work itself or did you enjoy the IT communications, broadcasting, or whatever it is you were doing? Did you love the work itself? No, well, 
Um, no, I, I mean, cause like my, my, my previous job, I loved tremendously and sadly that job, uh, you know, my time there had come to an end, okay. which, you know, but I love that job tremendously. And that was uh, doing, you know, uh, that was doing some uh, learning media stuff. And I really loved that. And, but of course my dream, even when I talked to my coworkers, then it was, you know, I, you know, I got, you know, my dreams to go to work at a church and, you know, like I didn't follow the IT, you know, pursuit in my younger, you know, like when I was a little bit younger, because I was like, you know, I really want to do this. So I went with it, but now I'm kind of, questioning whether or not I made the right choice. I, and, and that, and that was the purpose for my call is, you know, you know, what should I do? Should I count it up to maybe it was just a bad experience or should I, you know, maybe rethink, you know, like I do love this. It would offer somewhat better pay and more job opportunities for me. And it's like, it could, I, I just don't know what to do. And I think you're all over. Place. I think you're all over the place. I've tried to, I've tried to help you lock in on what's going on. So, so let's, let's re let's stop thinking and, and and stop making all these circular statements. I need you okay. to answer me straightforward right now. Okay. All right. We already know all the negative stuff about working at a place where you go to church. There's a lot of negative stuff that have nothing to do with the job, sounds like to me. Can we agree on that? Yes. Okay, then. So let's strip that away for a moment. The job itself, is there anything about it that you loved? You thought it was your dream job. You, you always wanted to do the technology, broadcasting, mass communication, whatever it is. Is there anything about the current job you love, the actual work itself? No, it drives me. It No. Okay, so there's your answer. What should you do? You need to re-clarify. So let's go back to the previous job that you loved. What did you love about okay. it? Tell me what you loved, and I want to talk about the work itself. What did you love? Okay, I love the community because I worked uh, for a PBS station. So I got to travel and I got to meet with people and learn history and stories and just the unique experiences that make, you know, you know, the place that I lived wonderful. And okay. I don't know, it's just, there was a lot of love in that, you know, just tell me more to, about the work, please. I know that some okay. of the work is traveling and, but I, I want to know about the job, man. I, I, we really got to get clear on this so that you can get confident and move forward. What okay. about the work? What did you do during the day besides learning about history and talking to people? Um, I helped manage certain things. So like, you know, if it was, cause some of it was coursework for schools. So I enjoyed getting to, uh, go over curriculum and kind of like, you know, well, how do we, you know, make this into a video? Cause like, we know we need to present this, but how do we do it? And you know, what's the most effective way to get there? Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Now I'm starting to get a picture. Now that's the type of work you love. You thought that working in the church, doing what was going to be what you love. What has changed? What changed in this new gig? The, and I'm talking about I, the work. Yeah. Um, it's not so much, uh, in a weird way, it, it, it's it's not so much people focused as it is just getting people to the place. You know, it's not about the people. And I guess that's it goes back to one of the things I loved was getting to you know getting to care about the people and everything. And it and it was about getting to know the people and you know getting to tell their stories. Okay. Where this is more, how do we you know like how do we you know give them the information of okay here's when church is going to happen. You know, this is what's going on, and it's just not the same. Does that okay. make sense? It does make sense. But are you are you now clear? Yeah, okay. I believe so. Okay, well, you should be because you know the type of work you want to do. You know what you want the tasks to be during the day, most of it, and you know what you want the interaction, the context of that work to be, correct? Yeah, yes, sir. All right, so you called me to say, should you leave? Or should you stay yeah. there and get promoted in a job that you don't love? Am I right? It wasn't... Uh... I guess it's more or less should I stay in the field and continue to find my place or should I go back to something else that I love? I guess that was more of my question. Uh, you should always go back to what you love because it doesn't sound like to me you like working in the church world, right? Yes. Yeah, leave. Okay. And not to say I don't love the church. It's just, you I know, get it. I know exactly yeah. what you're saying. You working in ministry is not a good fit. And I think you've identified that. Yes or no? Yes, sir. How clear are you on that? 60%, 90%, 100%? Honestly, 110%. That's right. So you just, okay. So I guess we could have just saved you a lot of time, but I really want to make sure you know where you're going. And I think you have a good idea on where you're going. But yeah, uh, stay in the position 
uh, until you find something else because I don't like you doing Geronimo jumps off of a cliff. I don't like that. So I want you to land something else and you need to, I don't care if it's in public broadcasting. I don't care if it's in the business world, uh, but you know, ministry is not a good setting for you. It's just not. And you know why. And so don't, don't backtrack. Don't start to question that. It's as clear as it can be. 844-747-2577. 844-747-2577. Nadia is in the chat room. She says, I've spent 10 years as a personal assistant. I want to start a project management business. Should I do a project management course or just go for it? Uh, yes and yes. Uh, if you can afford the course, sure. Probably not a bad idea to... Uh, make sure that, that that you know everything you need to know. Uh, brush up on maybe some things that, that you didn't know or acquire some new skills in this process. And it also kind of gives you a hint of what you should be offering uh, in this side business. Uh, so yes and yes. Uh, do both simultaneously. Go for it. Get started. Start telling people. Take the course. Uh, love that. Brandon writes in, when you leave a job, is it worth being blunt about why you're leaving if you know nothing is going to change with them? No. <laughs> uh, you know, the operating the operating truth here in your in your statement or question is, I know that nothing's going to change. You're already at that point. So the only reason you would be blunt when you're leaving is therapeutic. You just want to get it off your chest. I'm going to tell them what they need to know. Well, if nothing's going to change, my guess is they already know and they don't care. So you firing a couple shots off the bow before you leave, it's not going to change anything. Uh, but if you want to, you can. But you're leaving anyway. But you asked me, is it worth it? And I have learned, no, it's not. It's just negative energy coming out of you and it's not going to make a difference. Tara writes in, Hey, Ken, I took your should I quit my job quiz, which, by the way, is free at KenColeman.com. And she said, after taking the quiz, I am in the right role, wrong place. We just had that phone call. Uh, and I get it. She says, how do I manage through the current toxic management style while I'm here? You're going to have to become numb to it. You're going to have to filter it out, whatever you can, whatever analogy you want to use there. And it's simply this. You know you're not going to be there long, so let that be your focus. I'm, 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 I'm going to be moving on soon. <sighs> okay, that gives you a little bit of relief. Okay, I'm not going to stay in this toxicity. I know I'm not going to be here forever. I'm just going to have to deal with it. You know, it, it's the same kind of mindset that you would go through uh, if you've got to go through some type of physical therapy because you've got a broken bone or or some type of physical injury uh, or you're doing a renovation on a house project, it's going to make things uncomfortable, inconvenient, it's going to be exhausting, uh, but it's going to be worth it when we get done with it. That's the mindset. And you've done that in other areas of your life. Those are two examples. And that's how you do it. You just go, look, uh, I can put up with it. I can just kind of turn my ear deaf to it because you go, you know what? Not going to be my problem much longer. I'm not going to let it affect me personally or professionally. And then you just move through it. 844-747-2577. Thanks for the chat questions. You can continue to submit those uh, each day as you are watching. Uh, okay. So we've got a great article uh, at KenColeman.com in our article section called How to Write a Cover Letter. Uh, I, and, I, and I, full disclosure, um, we have created a resume and a resume template that um, is designed to eliminate the cover letter, but a lot of companies still require it. And I'm not a rule follower by nature, but I know that a lot of you are. And so we thought, well, I'm not a fan of cover letters because I just think they're a waste of paper. This is based on research that shows that hiring managers are spending 7.4 seconds scanning your resume. Okay. So uh, we wrote this article and uh, I just want to go through it briefly because this is the guts of what you need to do. But again, as you're watching, I want to teach through this briefly and then you can go to kencoleman.com and download the free article. Okay. So what to include and how to write the cover. Number one, start with a headline. Start with a headline. You know, think about an article headline that's designed to draw your eyes in to click it. Okay, the media are masters at this. Start with a headline. Your opening line needs to grab them and make them go, hmm, I want to read this cover letter. Uh, 
give your personal mission statement, a well-crafted sentence to let them know what you want to do and be professionally, the results that matter deeply to you. Okay. Um, and then use the company lingo anywhere you can in your writing. Uh, so example, if somebody's applying for a job at Ramsey Solutions and they're writing a cover letter, they want to use something like, I've lived like no one else. Now I want to work like no one else. And you're dropping in some values-based language that you know the company uses, and that's going to really grab their attention. Uh, tell them why you want the position. This is why. Boom. Hey, I want this because it aligns with my mission. Talk about your skills and what you're fired up about. So I work you through talent and passion. It needs to be in that second paragraph there. Tell them what you're bringing to the team, your talent, your your contribution, your experience, and then wrap it up, okay? So keep it to about 300 words. Be enthusiastic, and don't use lazy, cliche-type language, all right? Now, that's just a quick review. Just say, hey, this is how you win on a cover letter, okay? Uh, by the way, everything we just went through there is also contained in your resume. So when you use the resume guide at KenColeman.com, you've got a formula for, oh, we're going to take this over with Ken's uh, cover letter design and ideas here, and we're going to write it out. And it's short and sweet to the point, and your cover letter is going to be beautimous, as they like to say. So again, go get that. Uh, you can get the entire article at KenColeman.com. Dot com. Just click on articles. Uh, you can search writing a cover letter. And that's how you stand out. Remember, uh, you're not just submitting a letter because they're requiring it. If they're going to require it, you better make yours really punchy to make you stand out so they go, hmm, I want to read more here. Then they're going to see that resume guide that we've given you at KenColeman.com. They're going, wow, this is really different. Uh, I want to investigate this person. That's the edge. That's the edge. So that's how you write a cover letter. Uh, those are the guts of what you need to do. But again, go get the article. We walk you step by step, give you examples under each section of the cover letter. KenColeman.com. 844-747-2577. 844-747-2577. Hey, couple of great deals right now at KenColeman.com. And they're really inexpensive. Our Get Hired digital course. This is an 11-part video series. I'm teaching it on how to get hired. This includes the resume, the interview, the follow-up, uh, figuring out what's the right job for you, how you do research to clarify and verify. So much great information. It's only $20. KenColeman.com. And you can watch it as much as you want. We don't limit it. Okay? All you need is a tablet, computer, device, and an internet connection. Download it for only $20. KenColeman.com 11 part series. This is great for you or anybody that you know that wants to get hired. And then don't forget uh, the game changing resource with it is our number one Wall Street Journal bestseller, The Proximity Principle, uh, that walks you through the principle, which says, in order to do what you want to do, fill in the blank there. Okay. You got to get around people that are doing it and get in places where the work is happening. That's where opportunity presents itself, okay? And then we're going to give you the rest of the Get Hired information too. So great combo there. All three books, uh, excuse me, formats of the book, hard copy, ebook, audiobook, 25 bucks. That's all three for 25. So great deal. Go get that, KenColeman.com. All right, Jonathan is up next in Newark, Delaware. Jonathan, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hello, Ken. How you doing? Jonathan, I'm living the dream. What's up? So, um, I'm calling. I've been listening to you for a while now. Thank um, you. started listening to you through Dave. I, I'm, I'm a married male. I've been married for two years. Had my first child last July. I, I've been studying the visual arts for now for since 2016. Okay. I'm currently a truck driver. And by visual arts, I mean 3D animation, um, video compositing, just creating visual effects. Yeah. But, um, so basically my question is I'm a truck driver I'm studying that it's like a hobby thing. I pay for courses. I go to conferences and things like that. The only issue I'm having is getting myself around other people within my vicinity who are doing it. So I can build off that. I want to transition from yeah. the industry 
into that industry and um is is just looking for some advice yeah sure i'm so proud of you can i just start with that like you're doing everything that i would tell you to do and now it's just like ken how do i get in proximity to these people that are winning in the space you know guys and gals that are visual effects specialists you know um and I, is the challenge because you're in the truck all the time or is the challenge finding these people that's what the, both actually I, I work um i work 10 to 12 hours a day and my days off you know family time and i dedicate some time to hone in my craft yeah okay so you know what here's the good news uh and i write about this in the proximity principle do you have my book yes i do great listen to it twice all right great so <laughs> listen i want you to go back and and you may not need to because you've listened to it twice but remember Every one of those five people in the first section of people, every one of those people are accessible to you um, in a non-physical uh, way. And meaning uh, right now, because of your schedule in the truck, you got the downtime, it's hard for you to, to find the time to connect, although it's still possible. I want to challenge you that you can do it, okay? Um, but I want you to get started this week right away. I want you to go online. I want you to think YouTube, Instagram, uh, Facebook, okay? I want you to think about those three yes. platforms. And I want you to do some okay. research. You can Google this first. And let's find some successful uh, visual artists, uh, people that do 3D animation and do all kinds of visual effects. You know the work that you want to do, Okay. So let's see who are the rock stars out there that maybe have a podcast, uh, maybe they've written a book, or they offer a webinar or some type of MOOC, you know what I'm saying? And okay. and let's find those people, and then let's also look to see, do they have a YouTube channel? Are they on Instagram? And let's start learning from those folks. And let, So those are okay. what we would call the professional, meaning you may not be able to get coffee with them or have lunch with them, but we can start learning from them now, Okay. And we can learn best yeah. practices. We can learn what their path is. Let's start there. Okay. Now, that step, that's the first step for you. The first homework assignment. The second homework assignment is to do some research on Newark, Delaware, Delaware and surrounding areas and see what companies are in that space. And, and, and let's see uh, who's playing that game in your zip code. All right. Because there are some people that are doing that. Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. So now we go to the chapter in the in the last section of the book, Web of Connections, and we talk about, now, how can I get to somebody in that company? Now, I may not know anybody right away, and I only have Saturdays and Sundays. But I'll worry about when to connect with them later and how to connect with them. We just want to know who are the companies, and do I know anybody that works there? The answer may be no. I would suspect that it's no right now. So now it's next level. Do I know anybody that knows anybody that works there? Now, that is, the answer to that is probably yes, how long it's going to take you to figure that out, how long it's going to take to make the connection, and to where they make a connection for you, I don't know, but I know that's possible. Because even if it's on the phone, hey, listen, I'm a truck driver, been getting this training, been getting this qualification, I'd love to talk to you sometime. Good news is, I'm in the truck 10 hours a day, you text me and let me know when you're available and I'll call you. And we do a phone, we do a phone conversation, right? Or... You know, maybe they will agree to meet with you on a Saturday morning for coffee or breakfast, you know, or a Sunday afternoon for lunch or something like that. But that's the process. So you, that's what you called and said, Ken, how do I do it? Well, first we got to find them and then we got to connect with them. And that's how you do it. Okay. And you can do it, by the way. You really can. Is it going to take you a little bit longer because of your schedule? Maybe, maybe not. You know, because you got yeah, all that time in the truck. That's incredible time to be able to talk to people on the phone uh, and ask yeah. them questions and go to school on them. You understand what I'm saying? Yep. And by the way, that's the first part of transitioning. Opportunities come to you, Jonathan, on the other end of everything I just listed out. Did you make you and you read the book? You, it makes sense, correct? Yes, it does. Yes. All right. Anything else for me? Because you understand that and you know what to do now, correct? Yep. I'm. I'm going to go put it into put it into practice <laughs> listen you got this dude i'm proud of you man like i'm legit excited for you because the only thing that's keeping you from the transition is the connections which will then bubble up jobs for you and they'll go hey let me tell you about jonathan jonathan's a great fit here 
and then you got a job offer and you step right out of the truck right into that work okay you see it don't you thank you do you see it hello i'm yes, asking I, I can see it all right I I, that, that's really important that you see it because i can give you homework assignments and stuff to do but you got to see i see it on the other side of this and that's what will pull you in to the connections and turning over rocks which is all it takes it, listen i've said this before i want to say it again it's simple but it's not easy hey, understand the difference there i don't want to sell snake oil to you folks who go oh you just do this it happens right away ah i didn't say that i said it will work and it is a simple concept that takes time and effort but it will yield opportunity I know this because I came from nowhere with no degree and I got into broadcasting and I did this stuff, folks. The proximity principle is about getting connected. It's really written in stage three of my seven stages. Stage one is get clear. Stage two get qualified. Stage three is get connected. The proximity principle will help you get qualified and get connected and really get started because ultimately it leads to stage four, get started. But I'm telling you, I wrote the book based on my journey and doing it the wrong way and then figuring out how to do it the right way. And if I can figure out in my mid-30s how to get into broadcasting without a degree, get experience, work my way up to a nationally syndicated show, you can do it. So I want to make sure that you understand this isn't a bunch of rah-rah stuff I'm talking about. It works, but you've got to work it. So be encouraged. That's why I said to, to, to Jonathan at the end, do you see it? Because he's got to see that the effort and the time will pay off, and he does, and he'll get there. And he's already halfway there. I'm so proud of it. All right, Joe, time's almost up. But before I let you go, remember this. You matter, and you do have what it takes Thank you for being with us. Until next time, this is The Ken Coleman Show. Press on.